If you've ever spent time with toddlers, you know that they definitely keep life interesting and lively with all of their antics. They are constantly exploring, trying to figure things out and make sense of this great big world they live in. They get into cabinets and drawers they aren't supposed to, and they make messes just because they're too young to know that messes involve a ton of cleaning that somebody else will have to manage. And then, as they work through this exploring stage, they soon enter the stage that can become the most difficult for parents, other adults, and older siblings and friends to deal with. The stage of why. This is when a child asks that question over and over and over until you're ready to pull your hair out and go hide. Why are you so tall? Why is the sky blue? Why is macaroni and cheese yellow? Why is my sister sad? Why did somebody make her cry? Why did they say that? Why? 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 But why? But why? Sometimes in life, we deal with questions that are fairly simple to answer. But sometimes we are faced with questions that we struggle to understand or find the answers to. Sometimes life forces us to ask deep questions about why certain things happen, how things got so bad, and what can be done about it. In this series called And It Was Good, we're talking about injustice. If justice is something right, fair, or equal, then injustice is just the opposite of that. So. When we talk about injustice, we're talking about the things in our world that are not right, unfair, or unequal. Previously, we've talked about being aware and noticing injustice, and we've talked about experiencing injustice and the need and desire to correct it. That involved choosing to get close enough to listen to and learn about it from other people, to open our eyes and begin to notice injustice around us. But when we do those things, it's important to note that it will force us to ask some deep and difficult questions. Experiencing and witnessing injustice can leave us asking questions about the injustice itself, as well as the God who is supposedly in control of the world where it happens. Maybe you see an injustice in the world and you wonder things like, why would a person say that? How could someone do that to somebody else? What makes stuff like this happen? Why isn't anyone doing something about it? Why do things like this keep happening in a world where we should know better by now? Or maybe you've landed on the difficult question when it comes to injustice. Why isn't God doing something about this? Maybe it makes you nervous that I even said that out loud because we're not supposed to question God, right? After all, God is God and God can do whatever God wants. Or maybe, you hear me say that and you're like, yes, that's exactly what I keep asking. You probably feel relieved that somebody finally said it out loud. Or maybe this is the very reason you're still not sure about all this Jesus and God stuff. You can't imagine yourself being a Jesus follower if he's not going to do something about the brokenness you see around you. No matter where we are or what the world looks like right now, God is big enough to handle our questions, even the difficult ones. All sorts of people who have gone through all sorts of things have been trying to answer these questions since the beginning of time. So why do we keep asking? Because it bothers us. After all, how can a good God allow things like human trafficking, prejudice, poverty, and racism to happen and do nothing? Thankfully, we don't have to guess or assume where God is in the midst of all of this. We don't have to guess what God is really like or if God really cares. We can look at God's son, Jesus, who is the best way for us to see and understand what God is really like. Several people who knew Jesus personally and hung out with him took the time to write down what they saw and heard him do and say so that people like you and me, the ones who didn't get to see with our own eyes, would know what happened. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the eyewitness account of Matthew, a book written by one of Jesus's closest followers and friends. We call this the Book of Matthew or the Gospel of Matthew. His writing shows that he hung out with Jesus and knew what Jesus was about. Maybe that's why he took the time to write down this thing that he saw. Here's what he said. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom and he healed every kind of disease and illness. While Jesus was traveling, 
He was teaching, healing, and helping people as he shared the message of what God's kingdom is really like. He talked about things like loving outcasts, freeing enslaved people, rescuing the oppressed, feeding the hungry. In other words, he's talking about justice. Everywhere he went, Jesus had something to say and do about people being treated unfairly or in a way that wasn't right. Matthew continues, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus felt compassion for people who were experiencing circumstances that weren't right or fair. Compassion is the type of feeling that compels you to action. It's a feeling in the pit of your stomach when you see someone being hurt. The feeling that makes you want to put your arms out to cushion the fall of the kid who got pushed. The feeling that makes you wish you had a dollar to spare when you see someone suffering from lack of food or resources. That's compassion. Jesus modeled for us what God is really like when it comes to injustice. First, Jesus saw. He saw the injustice, he, the hurt, and the brokenness. And when he saw, Jesus cared. And when Jesus' heart was moved to care, then Jesus moved into action. That's what compassion is. So if you've ever wondered what God's stance is, God is for justice. In fact, thousands of years earlier, God said so through the prophet Isaiah. For I, the Lord, love justice. So we know that God loves justice. God loves for wrongs to be righted and for what's unfair to be made fair. Got it? God loves for good to conquer evil. God is good and God does conquer evil. Ultimately, we see that because God is always good, God is always pursuing justice. But that still doesn't answer the questions of how God pursues justice and why God doesn't do something about the injustices around us today. Why doesn't God just wave a magic wand or do that whole miracle thing God was so good at? Interestingly enough, Matthew gives us a clue in the next verse. Look at what Jesus said. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. Okay, so maybe you don't talk about harvesting a lot, but here Jesus is talking about work that needs to be done. He lived in a farming community. So when he started talking about planting and harvesting, it wasn't weird. It helped people understand him better. The kind of work Jesus spoke of required a lot of effort. So when he saw some of the injustices people were dealing with, Jesus had compassion and he responded to that compassion by telling others, it's time to get to work. He basically said, there's plenty to be done, but there's also plenty of room for more people to get involved in the work. Now, let me make this really personal for us. What if God has a plan to do something about injustice? And what if we are the plan? What if the miracle Jesus has in mind isn't making injustice magically go away, but instead it's you and me doing the work to end injustice on his behalf? What if it's us responding to all the things he already cares about? What if the plan is us becoming more like him? I think it's possible. Here's why. The Apostle Paul, whose life was changed by Jesus, wrote letters to the early churches and taught them what it looks like to be a Christian. He used this word picture to describe the church. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Paul uses the illustration of this one body made up of all of its individual parts. Even though it may seem like there is an ear independent from the toe, the whole body relies on each part in order to function as God designed it to. In the same way, God designed the body of Christ, or the church, to work together to help each other out. So, when we're talking about injustice, it's not that God isn't there or doesn't care. Instead, God is calling the church, God's people, to be God's hands and feet here on earth. Because God is always good. God is always pursuing justice. God pursues racial justice through us. God pursues nonviolence towards women with a plan, and that plan is us. God pursues justice for issues like sex trafficking, hunger, poverty, modern day slavery, and all of the injustices we see on a local and global level through us. 
We get to be part of God pursuing the restoration of goodness over all the bad things we see people dealing with in our world. The question is, will you participate in what God is already doing? If so, where do we start? Here are a couple of steps you can take to begin. First, rethink what it means to be a follower of Jesus. In other words, to change our minds about the way we see God, the world, and even ourselves when it comes to injustice. Maybe you thought faith was about singing songs and showing up at church and praying. And those are all good things, but following Jesus is so much bigger than that. Following means you start to see the world like he sees it. You care about what he cares about. You treat people the way he would treat them. Following means you sign up to be a part of the solution, a part of the plan. Second, ask, where am I? Often, we tend to see injustice and ask, where is God in this mess? But we have a responsibility as Jesus followers to examine how each of us is pursuing justice. It's important to choose to be part of what God is already doing in the world, to ask God to begin to show you where your place might be in working toward justice in your community, your school, or in the world as a whole. And last, find a way to fight injustice. Look around and determine what is breaking your heart. Discover who is working to fight injustice in the area and figure out how you can partner with them. Step up, serve, give your time, give your energy, and give your money. Take the skills, personality, and resources God has given you and find ways to use them to help bring justice to the injustices God has shown you. Over and over, we see the authors of scripture teach us that God cares deeply about injustice and wants to use us to do something about it. This means that God's people should be known for being people who pursue justice, just like God. Just imagine what the world could look like if we became known as a group of people who are the most compassionate, just, kind, humble, and resilient. Imagine if we were the first to speak up and stand up for others, no matter what. Imagine the positive impact we, as a collective group, could have on our community, our schools, and in the lives of people we care about. We have so many opportunities to show people that God is for them and for the pursuit of justice. When you head to groups, think about what it would take for your group to have an impact like that. How might that impact change the lives of people experiencing injustice? How might that impact change the way people see God? Mm -hmm.